Shabbatah Shalom. Shabbatah Shalom. Greetings, brothers and sisters. We give glory to Ahaya, Ashere Ahaya, and our Adonai Yache, in whom we have the opportunity of eternal life, and our mother, Ruaka Kwadoshi. Amen. May Ahaya be glorified. We hope you all are enjoying this Shabbatah day. And today we're going to be looking at the law of the spirit of life. Let's read Hebrews chapter 7, verse 11 to 14. Hebrews chapter 7, verse 11. If therefore perfection were by the Levitical priesthood, what further need was there that another priest should rise after the order of Melchizedek and not be called after the order of Aaron? For the priesthood being changed, there is made of necessity a change also of the law. That's right. You had to change the law of the animal sacrifices since the high priesthood changed. For he of whom these things are taken pertaineth to another tribe, of which no man gave attendance at the altar. For it is evident that our Adonai sprang out of Judah, of which tribe Mushi spake nothing concerning priesthood. And the ministration of Yahweh's priesthood, the ministration of Melchizedek, is the law of the spirit of life, which is being a living sacrifice. Actually, putting up the body of sin and walking in love. That is the new ministration of Mishiach Yache, offering sacrifices in righteousness, as First Peter chapter 2, verse 5 talk about offering spiritual sacrifices. That sacrifice, the true sacrifice of Melchizedek, is what was meant to save us from the beginning. Let's look at Galatians chapter 3, verse 16 and 17. Galatians chapter 3, verse 16. Now to Abraham and his seed were the promises made. He saith not, and to seeds as of many, but as of one, and to thy seed, which is Messiah. And this I say, that the covenant that was confirmed before of Elohim in Messiah, the law, which was 430 years after, cannot disannul that it should make the promises of no effect. Now it's quite amazing that the covenant was confirmed of Alamayim in Meshiaka, letting us know that Yache was to be that blood sacrifice to establish the covenant of the law. Just as Moses read all the commandments and then sprinkled the blood on the people, right. it was ordained before that animal sacrifice, which Moses did, had ever happened that that same covenant where we would read the law, so it has to be all the commandments be kept, and the blood of Yah should be sprinkled in our hearts was the covenant that was established with Abraham before animal sacrifice of the Levitical priesthood had ever came into being. That's why I said 430 years after, because animal sacrifice came 430 years after Abraham was given the promise in Genesis. Going from Galatians to show that Yah was supposed to be the animal sacrifice, okay, and that the physical Levitical priesthood animal sacrifice could not save us. Hence, we had to have Yache come because that is what was actually promised to Abraham. Look at Hebrews chapter 10, verse 4 to 10. Okay. Hebrews chapter 10, verse 4. For it is not possible that the blood of bulls and of goats should take away sins. Wherefore, when he cometh into the world, he saith, Sacrifice and offering thou wouldest not. But a body hast thou prepared me, and burnt offerings and sacrifices for sins thou hast had no pleasure. So Yahshua was attesting before he even came into the world as a flesh and blood man that those animal sacrifices Allah I am didn't want, because Yahshua knew he had to come fulfill this work to bring salvation unto the world. Then said I, Lo, I come in the volume of the book. It is written of me to do thy will, O Allah I am. And then we see how the righteousness of Allah was revealed through Yache. He came to do his will, which was to come into the world, keep all the commandments, bear all the fruits of the Spirit, and die to sinful flesh and be raised in immortality. That's quite amazing because Yache said in John 7 and 17, if any man do his will, then he shall know the doctrine. Right. If we do those things, we will know the doctrine was of Allah because Allah is who sent Yache to do the same thing. That's wonderful. Above when he said, sacrifice and offering and burnt offerings and, and offerings for sin, thou wouldest not. 
neither had his pleasure therein, which are offered by the law. That was offered by the law of the Levitical priesthood. So understand that when Paul is talking about the law in certain places, he's talking about animal sacrifice. Okay? And we know the works of the law, deeds of the law, and letter of the law is talking about animal sacrifice. Correct. Right? Continue. Then said he, Lo, I come to do thy will, O Elohim. He taketh away the first, that he may establish the second. So Yahweh came and did it. He took away animal sacrifice to establish the law of the spirit of life. Continue. By the which will we are sanctified through the offering of the body of Yahweh Messiah once for all. Right. He offered that atonement in the holies of holies. So that shows that the that promise that was made to Abraham, that blood of Yahweh was what the covenant of Abraham was to be truly established in, because the covenant of Abraham was a promise according to the spirit. Therefore, the sacrifice for Abraham, <laughs> Abraham's covenant had to be a sacrifice according to the spirit. <laughs> so go back to Galatians 3 and 18. For if the inheritance be of the law, it is no more a promise. <laughs> now you understand, if the inheritance is about the carnal sacrifice, it's no more promise because the promise was spiritual. Because <laughs> right. the promise wasn't by the law. Let's continue. But Abraham gave it to Abraham by promise. Wherefore, then serveth the law. It was added because of transgressions. That confirms that it was when he's talking about the law in this Galatians, he's talking about animal sacrifice. Right. The law is always added because of transgression, because when Adam sinned, there became a need for animal sacrifice. Right. There were sacrifices offered for Adam when he sinned. To be ensured, you can confirm it and see that they were given coats of skin. Right. Because when the priest offers a sacrifice, the skin belongs to the priest when you read the law in Leviticus. Can you read verse 19 again, please? Wherefore then serves the law? It was added because of transgressions, till the seed should come to whom the promise was made. And it was ordained by angels in the hand of a mediator. So there we see that animal sacrifice was only for the time until Yahweh should come. Right. Because Yahweh was the one who was meant to fulfill it. Continue. Now a mediator is not a mediator of one, but Elohim is one. All right. Is the law then against the promises of Elohim? <laughs> now it's kind of funny when you read it now, right? Understanding what he's talking about. <laughs> it's funny. <laughs> Elohim forbid. <laughs> Never. That very law is what Yahweh came to do in order to fulfill the promise that was made to Abraham. For there had been a law given which could have given life. So in plain speech, if the law of animal sacrifice could have actually given life, verily righteousness should have been by the law. It would have been. But the blood of bulls and rams could not purge our conscience. When you read Hebrews 9, 9 to 14, and Hebrews 10, about verse 10 to 6, somewhere there, continue. But the scripture has concluded all under sin. So that shows that whole time we had animal sacrifice all under sin because our hearts wasn't purged and we continued sinning, right. which brought forth death, all right? That the promise by faith of Yahweh and Messiah might be given to them that believe. Them that believe in true atonement. Continue. But before faith came, we were kept under the law, shut up unto the faith which should afterwards be revealed. Wherefore the law was our schoolmaster to bring us unto Messiah. The veil was of our hearts that we could not see the end of the law, which was Yahche. Well, the law was our schoolmaster. The law was a preparation to let us know when Yahche come and did what he did, we would understand it was him. Right. And we would understand what he truly did for us by going into the holies of holies, pouring the blood upon the mercy seat to atone for us. Continue. But after that faith has come, we're no longer under a schoolmaster. Now that Yahweh is here, we're no longer under animal sacrifice. Right. And this is going to lead to help for understanding when we go into the lesson on Passover. For the, so the body of Meshiach can be edified to work our righteousness in the sight of Elohim. Right. Right. Continue. For ye are all the children of Elohim by faith in Meshiach Yahweh. 
And there we see how we all become the children of Allah. Now that blood, because the covenant is red, the commandments are here. We have the law and the prophets. All right. And now that blood is shed on all nations in their hearts through Mishyaka Yachi. As Romans chapter 1, I mean chapter 5, verse 1 through 5 talks about. So you see how now we're all the children of Allah through faith in Mishyaka Yachi. Now, let's touch Romans 8, 1 and 2. Romans chapter 8, verse 1. There is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Mishiach Yache, who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. For the law of the spirit of life in Mishiach Yache hath made me free from the law of sin and death. So the, the law that Yache went and did in the spirit, he went and fulfilled it, went into the holies of holies and put the blood on the mercy seat. And that atonement blood entered into our hearts. And by entering into our hearts, it purged our conscience. And through purging our conscience, it gave us the comfort to walk in a pure heart and good conscience to attain unto charity, which is the end of the commandment. And we attain unto this charity by Yache in us, which is the hope of glory. That law of the spirit of life leads us to put off the body of sin with the circumcision of the heart that we may attain the life in Yache. Can we go from there to Romans chapter 6, verse 23? Mm -hmm. Romans chapter 6, verse 23. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of Allah is eternal life through Yahweh Mashiach, our Adonai. Mm -hmm. There you see the clear dichotomy. You had the law of sin and death, or the law of the, law of the spirit of life. And walking in the flesh, whether we trust the animal sacrifice, trusting in the fact that we're Israel, those carnal things are going to lead to death. As opposed to trusting in the atonement and blood of Yahweh and rejoicing in Him, our salvation that's working in our hearts to lead us unto life, both Jew and Gentile, that would lead to everlasting life. The animal sacrifice, as we see, couldn't lead us to stop sinning. And we're going to read about that in Hebrews chapter 9, verse 9 and 10, and then jump to verse 12, please. Hebrews chapter 9, verse 9. Which was a figure for the time then present, in which were offered both gifts and sacrifices that could not make him that did the service perfect, as pertaining to the conscience, which stood only in meats and drinks and diverse washings and carnal ordinances, imposed on them until the time of reformation. Neither by the blood of goats and calves, but by his own blood he entered in once into the holy place, having obtained eternal redemption for us. There we see Yache himself went into the heavens with the blood to atone in the heavens. And, and he had to reform. Reformation means that it had to be changed. So, Let's jump to Hebrews chapter 10, verse 1 to 4, please. Right. Hebrews chapter 10, verse 1. For the law having a shadow of good things to come, and not the very image of the things, can never with those sacrifices which they offer year by year continually make the comers thereunto perfect. Let me see very straightly. We understand why Yahshua had to come. For then would they not have ceased to be offered. Because that the worshippers once purged should have had no more conscience of sin. That blood of them bulls and goats, it couldn't take away the sins. So you can see and confirm by precept in Galatians and here in Hebrews that Paul was talking about animal sacrifice as opposed to the true blood sacrifice according to the eternal spirit in the heavens. Let's look at Hebrews 9 verse 12 to 14, please. You want me to finish in Hebrews 10? I'm sorry. What verse did we get to? I'm at three right now. Oh, wow. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but in those sacrifices, there is a remembrance again made of sins every year. All right. Because they had to do the atonement every year for the people. The high priest had to go and do the atonement. Right. All right. That shows it was talking about the Day of Atonement. Right. Right. That was that one C on the Day of Atonement in the seventh month, showing that the law that Paul was focusing on is the law of atonement, because Yahshua was the atonement for sins. Right. So that showed that they could never stop sinning if they had to the do atonement year. every year. Right. Right. 
For it is not possible that the blood of bulls and of goats should take away sins. That's right. Now we'll look at Yache to see that better hope was in him that could actually take it away. We actually just go ahead and read Hebrews chapter 9, verse 11 to 14, please. Okay. Hebrews chapter 9, verse 11. But Messiah being come in high priest of good things to come by a greater and more perfect tabernacle, made not with hands, that is to say, not of this building, neither by the blood of goats and calves, but by his own blood, he entered in once into the holy place, having obtained eternal redemption for us. For if the blood of bulls and goats and the ashes of an heifer sprinkling the unclean sanctifieth the the purifying of the flesh. And now you see what he was talking about with diverse washings. He's talking about ashes of a heifer, the water of purification. He wasn't talking about the washings you have to do when you're unclean in Leviticus chapter 15. Yeah, 15. But this washing with the sprinkling of a heifer, you actually have to do a sacrifice. That's why we can't do that anymore because we're not under the law of sacrifice. We're under the law of the true living sacrifice by the eternal spirit through Yahweh Meshiach now. How much more shall the blood of Meshiach, who through the eternal spirit offered himself without spot to Elohim, purge your conscience from dead works to serve the living Elohim? His sacrifice keeps us to work at righteousness and become a part of the true house of Elohim, according to the spirit, which is his church offering living sacrifices, spiritual sacrifices, acceptable to Allah by Yache Mishiaka. Let's look at 1 Peter 2 and 5, please. Ye also, as lively stones, are built up a spiritual house and holy priesthood to offer up spiritual sacrifices acceptable to Allah by Yache Mishiaka. And when we understand what he's talking about, spiritual sacrifices, we know Romans chapter 12, verse 1 and 2. If you've been following along with us, according to the grace of Allah, to know that we have to be a living sacrifice by the renewing of our mind and doing that, which is the perfect will of Allah, proving all things to make sure is the perfect will of Allah through the law and the fruits of the Spirit. Let's jump to Colossians chapter 2, verse 11 <laughs> to 17. Please. Colossians chapter 2, verse 11. In whom also ye are circumcised with the circumcision made without hands, and putting off to the body of the sins of the flesh made by the circumcision of Messiah. The circumcision of our heart is painful because we're suffering, putting off sin, because you actually have to resist sin. We have to stand against our former selves to overcome. And that process is suffering because you're dying to everything you were, everything you used to be, that Mishiaka Yache may be formed in us. This is the process that we're going through to put off this circumcision of the heart and put away the body of sin. As 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 1 and 2 talks about how, for he that hath suffered in the flesh hath ceased from sin, so you can understand it. Can you read that, please? Okay. First Peter chapter 4, verse 1. For as much then as Messiah has suffered for us in the flesh. So the same way he died for us, continue. Arm yourself likewise in the same mind. The same way we have to war against sin and overcome it. And that lets us know Yahweh had to overcome sin because right. he came as a man. Right. It confirms it that we have to put on the same mind he did, showing that he was just like us, tempted with the same infirmities as we are, as Hebrews chapter 2 talks two about. Times. And he, we also have to resist as, as he resisted, and it gives us comfort to heart to know that he came as a man and did it right. to let us know that it can be done through him. That's right. It's amazing. All right, continue. For he that hath suffered in the flesh hath ceased from sin, that he no longer should live the rest of his time in the flesh of the lust of men. But to the will of Allah, I am. I be magnified. So we understand what the circumcision of Mishiach was. Let's go back to Colossians 2 and read from verse 12 to 17, please. Colossians 2 and 12. All right. Buried with him in baptism, wherein also ye are risen with him through the faith of the operation of Allah, I am, who has raised him up from the dead. And you being dead in your sins and this uncircumcision of your flesh, hath he quickened together with him, having forgiven you all trespasses. And we know that's forgiveness for our former sins. Right. 
by working that which is right in his sight. Continue. Blotting out the handwriting of ordinances that was against us. We know what the ordinance was that was against us. Right. It's the physical animal sacrifice because it could have purged our conscience. Right. <laughs> Continue. Something had to die. Right. Blotting out the handwriting of ordinances that was against us, which was contrary to us, and took it out of the way, nailing it to his cross. Right. Now we understand that verse, and you confirmed it in Romans 8 and 2, please. And having spoiled principalities and powers, he made a show of them openly, triumphing over them in it. Let's jump back to Colossians chapter 2, verse 16 now. Let no man therefore judge you in meat, or in drink, or in respect of an holy day. Or of the new moon, or of the Shabbat days. Now you understand exactly what Paul was talking about. Let no man judge you in respect of these things because there were physical animal sacrifices according to the Levitical priesthood that had to be offered on these days. Paul was not telling anyone to break the commandments because <laughs> if we sin, we're going to die. We can't be free from the law of sin and death and then sin. He was talking about the animal sacrifices of the Levitical priesthood. Let no man judge you in those. Continue in verse 17 so we can confirm that Paul was talking about animal sacrifices here. Which are a shadow of things to come, but the body is a Messiah. Please, read verse 16 and 17 again. Yeah. <laughs> Let no man therefore judge you in meat or in drink or in respect of an holy day or of the new moon or of the Shabbat days. Which are a shadow of things to come. Hebrews 8 and 5 and Hebrews 10 and 1 talks about animal sacrifices and the physical sanctuary that was a shadow of things to come. This gives you confirmation that Paul was talking about animal sacrifice when he said, Let no man judge you in meat or in drink or in respect of a holy day or a new moon or a Sabbath days. Because there were sacrifices in Numbers 28 that pertained to these things. Now, for all the feasts, we're offering the sacrifices of Mashiach. That lets you know what the true offerings of the true church is. Living sacrifices. Spiritual sacrifices. Right. That's how you are part of the church of Mashiach. But the body, which is of Mashiach, walks according to the spirit of life that is free from the law of sin and death being a living sacrifice. Hence, you will know the true members of the church by their fruits that they bear, since the true members will partake in the affliction of not sinning and bearing the fruits like Yache. And let's look at Matthew 10, verse 38 to 40. Matthew chapter 10, verse 38. And he that taketh not his cross and followeth after me is not worthy of me. He that findeth his life shall lose it, and he that loses his life for my sake shall find it. If we die to ourselves, we're going to find life, true life, the spirit of life right. in Mishiach Ayache. Right, continue. He that receiveth you receiveth me, and he that receiveth me receiveth him that sent me. This is why we have to be a living sacrifice, because we have to exemplify Yache so that the people that we interact with, encounter, may have an opportunity to see Yache and receive him. Because for ye are the light of the world. You have to let the light of Mishiach Ayache shine in you. And the way you let him shine is by working righteousness in the power of the fruits of the Spirit. Because the gospel is not in word, but in deed, right. mighty unto the breaking down of strongholds and bringing all high things and every high imagination into subjection unto the obedience of Mishiach. So let your walk exemplify Mishiach Yache. Colossians chapter 1 verse 24. And we're looking at Paul here to see that it's our walk to magnify the gospel. Who now rejoice in my suffering for you and fill up that which is behind of the afflictions of Mashiach in my flesh for his body's sake, which is the church. So we see all of us that want to be members of the church have to do. We have to put on our cross and go through our sufferings, be keeping our body in subjection as 1 Corinthians 9 and 27 talks about, to fill up that which is behind, to fulfill the rest of the afflictions that the body of Mishiach has to partake in for his church. 
This is how we become members of the church. Uh, he has given us understanding of how to be in the church and know we're in the church. Right. We already looked at 1 Peter chapter 4 to know that that suffering means we cease from sin. So to be a member of the church, no sinning, and we have to bear the fruits. Now, let's look at Romans chapter 3, verse 31. Do we then make void the law through faith? Allah forbid, yea, we establish the law. The law of the church is to be a living sacrifice, to cease from sin and bear the fruits of the Spirit, which is the end of the commandment to come to 1 Timothy 1 and 5, with a pure heart and a good conscience and faith unfeigned. And through this washing of the water by the word, we may attain and be presented with the church blameless. Read Ephesians 5, verse 25 to 27. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 25. Husbands, love your wives, <coughs> even as Messiah also loved the church and gave himself for it. So we have clear example for us men. Right. We have to be living sacrifices. We have to put on all the fruits of the Spirit and die to our former selves. That's how we actually show our wives that we love them, right. by operating with them in the fruits. Just as Yache showed his wife, he loved her, by coming, operating the fruits, being a living sacrifice, and dying to sin, that he may save her. Right. The same way, husbands, we have to do the exact same thing to save our households. Walk by faith, not by sight. Don't look at what is in front of you. Look at what is ahead. Look towards the goal in Yache and cleave unto him that your household may be saved. Because the husband is the savior of the body. He has to save his wife. Husbands, your household depends on you to change right. and do that which is right in the sight of Allah. And why is being subjection to your husband? Because you all are one. You have to do this together that your prayers be not hindered. As First Peter chapter 3, verse 1 to about verse 7 talks about. Now you're at verse 26. Please, in Ephesians 5 and 26 that he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of the water by the word. So we see how to sanctify our households for us husbands. Work in righteousness right. and the washing. And you have to exhort righteousness, speaking of righteous dialogues continually with your household and doing it continue that your household may see Mishiaka in you and continue. That he might present it to himself a glorious church not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but it should be holy and without blemish. This is how we save our households, just as Yache saved his household. Right. And this is how we partake in the household of Yache, by being blameless. So now we understand the law of the spirit of life and how to be true members of the church. And that we are no longer in animal sacrifices. We are now in the spiritual sacrifices, being living sacrifices. Good. Chalam. Chalam. <laughs>